Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Silver Lines Beauty Playbook. So today's video, depending on when you get this video, it might still be trending or not, but that doesn't matter because there's something really important that I want to talk about when it comes down to this topic. Today, we are going to talk about Gorilla Glue Bay. Before we get into this video, I'm going to talk about my look today, all right? I want a little extra today, okay? For this is all for Gorilla Glue Bay. I want her to know that we're going to represent and we're going to keep it cute. You know, there's no Gorilla Glue here, but this edge is just laid, okay? Ah! <laughs> it's a simple bun on the top, and I went in with um, a slight beat glam. It is red velvet on my lips. It's by Lime Crime Velvet Teens. Let's get into the video. I wanted to call her bae because I feel like her actions actually encouraged this conversation that we're about to have today. Some of you guys might know her as Gorilla Glue Girl. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a background on what happened with her. I don't know the exact story because I wasn't there when she did it, but I'm just going off of some of the interviews that I've seen and some of the um, articles that I've read about the matter. So somebody actually sent that to me uh, on Instagram. That's when I got to know who she was. But a young lady, somewhere in her 40s, was getting ready to go out somewhere, I believe. She was getting her hair did all by herself. She was doing like a corner part with like a swoop, you know, swoop gel down, you know, into a ponytail, sleek back look. And then uh, she had an attachment, a braid attachment in the back. She said that when she went to go grab the got to be glued hairspray to catch the flyaways and slick it all back, that all that was coming out of the can was air. So she had ran out, didn't know. So running around the house looking for what she could use. I think she said she went into the kitchen somewhere, ran into the Gorilla Glue spray. Gorilla Glue is a glue that you can use to was, uh, fixing things in the house, right? They come in sprays, they come in um, squeeze bottles, they come in brush-ons, but anything that is broken, it's, it's supposed to have the strength of a gorilla to keep things together. She found the spray in the kitchen and said, okay, let me go ahead and try this real quick. Now, we all don't really know how much of it she used because that was never shown on camera, but she sprayed her hair with it and she also said that she used a blow dryer right behind it to kind of just, I guess, harden it, girl. I <laughs> That just sounds like a lot. She went out, came back home and tried to wash it out and it wasn't coming out. And she said that she had had her hair in that style glued down like a helmet basically for about a month before she realized that there was nothing else she could do. She was just going to go ahead and just ask Instagram. Unfortunately, she showcased a weak moment. And of course, social media had a field day about it. And up until now, they're still... Um, making fun, calling her dumb, stupid, and making songs to dance to on Instagram. Luckily enough for Gorilla Glue Bay, she's been able to get the product off. A doctor out in California was willing to help her for free. I believe I heard that she created a GoFundMe and the GoFundMe earned a good amount of money and she's donating the money from what I heard. So she wanted to let people know that she wasn't out here to uh, be publicized or be popular. She literally was asking for help. And instead of getting the help that she needed, she just got ridiculed on social media, which I thought was really disgusting. So when I first got that video, I was shocked. But then I thought to myself, man, this isn't something new in our community. The only difference with Gorilla Glue Bay is the fact that we know about her mistakes. But I just felt really sad inside because how many times as Black women, have we wanted a look and we were just willing to do anything for it? We're willing to sacrifice our hair, our nails, our lashes for the look. We've done it. We've all done it. I actually found out that some girls actually use Gorilla Glue to attach fake nails onto their nails, which I was just like, so it says on the container that we shouldn't use Gorilla Glue for hands, body, feet, or whatever. But there are people that have actually admitted to being to using Gorilla Glue for the purpose of fixing a, a broken nail or a nail that popped off. And in our community, we're one of the only ones that when it comes to applying lashes, we will use hair glue instead of lash glue just because we wanted a stronghold bond. Not realizing that it's possible that something in your hair glue can be damaging or irritating to your eye. But it doesn't matter because in our community, if you don't look a certain way, if you're not slick back, 
pulled back tight edges laid all the time, two, four, seven, you're not considered beautiful. Somebody's going to sit up there and call you nappy or girl, lay them edges. Basically, if you're not uncomfortable, if you're not uncomfortable, if you're comfortable, something's wrong. You ain't got that look right. You have to be uncomfortable to be considered beautiful. So a lot of us have actually done a lot of things that we're not supposed to do but we will never tell anyone that we're doing it. We would never publicize it. When is it going to end? When can we leave our houses, our homes, and go to work or go and play and not be judged by how we look? I feel like we're probably one of the only races that have to just be so bothered by what we have on our hair or how laid slick back our hair is, if we have lashes or not, if your nails is done or not, if your uh, eyebrows is popping or not. Like we're like one of the only races where if none of the, if your stuff ain't popping, you're going to hear about it. Girl, what's wrong? You sick? You're like, I'm not sick. I just decided not to wear eyelashes today or eyebrows today. Can I live? All I saw in that moment was what we've been dealing with a lot. And I feel like Instead of showing Gorilla Glue Bay some love, some, you know, it's going to be all right, girl. The first thing we do, we point fingers as if we weren't doing the same things too. That was one of the first reasons why I started a hair journey years ago. I had gotten myself to a place where without weaves, braids, or extensions, I did not feel beautiful. I would look at my hair and I'd be like, my hair has to be gorgeous because... God gave it to me, but I didn't know how to step out of my home and not feel like that. I want to say from like the beginning of my journey to like nine, 10 months into the journey, I was very subconscious about like what I look like, you know, like my edges were out. My new growth was popping hard and I was just like, how can I slip this back? Are people judging me? What does it look like? I feel like it's just hair. Like I literally had conversations with myself about what I look like because I didn't fit the mold. I stopped wearing fake nails for the same reasons. I'll tell you guys a little story. When I got my job as a flight attendant, one of the first things that we were told was about the look. You had to look the part. You had to be this preppy flight attendant, nails done, hair did, uh, makeup all the time. They want your nails a certain length and certain way, manicured, pedicure. When I got out of flight attendant training and I, the, within the first year, I was always getting my nails done. I was doing the uh, pink and white gel. That's one of my things. I like the French look. So I would do that. And I remember every time I went to go get the gel, either filled in or re-soaked or whatever it is, I just remember seeing my nails looking so brittle. Girl, it looked like dust, okay? It is like, I can tell that my nails were hurting, but I was like, well, my I, I need to look the part. So go ahead and slap some more on. And then one day I was hanging out with a coworker, another flight attendant. We were having lunch at her house. I remember looking at her nails and one of her nails, I want to say it's like the thumb. And I remember looking at it from where I was. And I'm the kind of person that when I, when I fix on something, I need to know what the hell is going on. And I remember looking at her thumbnail like, what am I looking at? Because it don't, it don't look right. And I'm, I'm trying to pretend that I'm not, you know, because you're trying to have a conversation without looking at a person's thumb. So after like trying to figure it out in my head, I was like, I'm just going to ask her. I'm like, girl, uh, what's going on with your thumb? You know? And then she was like, oh yeah, I got to get it filled in, blah, blah, blah. But I said, but I, I don't see a nail. Like I, filled in, like, what do you mean? She was like, that's the thing. You know, I've been getting my nails done for so long that her nail actually just stopped growing. So all there was on her thumb was just bed. It was, it was nail bed. There was no nail. It was just bed. The nail pretty much has said, we're done. You have told us that you don't need us anymore. We're done. She has gotten to the place where she needs to always have her nails done to not look like she's walking around with bed. Just bed. Whoa. I didn't know that could happen. Thank God for the encounter because I was like, I got all them things soaked up. And ever since then, the only time I get my nails done, to be honest, is my birthday or somebody's wedding. Besides that, I, I like to live free. I did realize in my hair journey that if I continued 
to live like that with extensions all the time, that I was going to lose my hair to the process. Just like my friend lost her nails to the process, I was going to lose my hair to that process. If we are not careful in the Black hair care community, and if we always continue to cater to um, people's expectations of us, we are going to lose it all. Their girls in their 50s are not going to have lashes no more and are going to be walking around with bed and probably... If they have hair on their head, they won't have any edges. And then the second thing that bothered me about this whole process was the fact that Gorilla Glue Bay made a mistake that I believe that anybody could make because the way companies are marketing their products, you're not even sure sometimes if you should eat a hair product or use it on your hair. If it's not a hair gel souffle, it's a hair bake cookie dough conditioner. If it's not a vanilla bunches of oats cream conditioner, it's a coconut wine nourishing shampoo. What is it with brands trying to sell us products by enticing people? But black people like food? Is that what it is? Now, I will say this. I do like the idea that some of these products do have a better smell than the old school hair care products because old school hair care products just smell straight up like Vaseline and engine oil. Like you're just like... What was that? That's, oh, okay. That's, that's blue magic. Okay. We got that. There was always something about old school hair care products that didn't smell delicious, but I'm realizing that the new, new school hair care products, everything smells like food. And if it doesn't smell like food, it sounds like food. Imagine this. All right. I know everybody wants to blame Gorilla Glue Bay for making such a mistake, but imagine if you were a foreigner and you've never seen these type of products before. You went into somebody's house and saw a, a a jar that looked like the shape of a honey bottle, you would assume that whatever content was in that bottle was actually honey. You have the color of honey. You have the bottle looking like honey. You even have the product saying honey hair care or something like that. And how I can relate this to her is, first of all, the got to be glued hairspray uses the word glue in it. No product that says glued should be used in your hair, period. So if she sat there and said, well, this one has glue and that one has glue, maybe the glue, uh, maybe, uh, 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 okay, I'll use it. Why is a product being marketed as a hairspray glued? You guys don't see a problem with that? Or is that just me? There's also another product online. I don't even know who's by. It's Gorilla Snot Gel. And then on the bottle, it has the picture of a gorilla. If you see that container, yes, the two containers don't look alike, but they also both have the word gorilla and they have the picture of a gorilla on there. Anybody tell me why a brand would market gorilla for hair? Gorilla snot for hair? So they can't say it's gorilla glue because that would be misleading, but they said gorilla snot, like that helps. And the fact that anybody would see Gorilla Snot and say, that's the product I would love to use because we all know that Gorilla Snot has to be really thick and it's adhesive and it's going, it's a gel. You guys need to understand that some people associate certain words with certain meanings. Everybody's not the same. Common sense is not common for everyone. And even though it's common, there are people that still make silly mistakes due to how things are marketed or how things are said. There's so many ways of looking at it. And I feel like the fault wasn't just hers. I hope that after this situation has happened, that we kind of start to relax a little bit about what it is that we, we need to look like before we go out or before we feel beautiful. People don't understand the mental toll it takes to release that energy of feel, feeling like you have to be cute 247 or you have to be laid and slayed 247. She made a mistake and I just think that it's so silly that nobody saw the bigger picture. I think towards the end of everything, like people were beginning to feel sorry for her because they realized how serious it was. But all I saw was the desperation that exists in our community. Let's stop judging. Let's stop hating. Let's start teaching each other and let's start encouraging one another so that we can start feeling good about ourselves as a whole. Y'all stop following the Instagram looks, okay? I'm telling you, half the people, if not more than half, that have lace fronts and edges and even sell hair for a living don't have their own hair underneath. 
Check it out. Ask them. Half of them don't have hair underneath that damn wig, but they're selling it to you. I mean, I'm trying to mind my business, but I was just trying to keep it real. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Mwah. <laughs>